didn't live up to the first book's level of emotions, characters, plot, like everything for me. So oh my gosh, I love it! I'm going to literally put it on my body right now. Hello, gorgeous reading Angel Misty Queens. I hope you're having the most wonderful day of your entire stinking life. I'm so excited for this vlog. I know I say that like pretty much every video, but I've just been having such a good time with my reading lately. And this is a crazy vlog. I do have an entire vlog dedicated to reading the first two books. That video is same structure as this one will be. The first whole part will be non-spoiler thoughts, updates as I'm reading. House of Flame and Shadow. And then at the very end, I will have a spoiler section. You will have a ton of warning beforehand, so if you don't want spoilers, I literally have an alarm that goes off telling you there's going to be spoilers incoming. I have been dying to get my hands on this. I have started her. I'm trying to do at least 120 to 130 pages each day, so that way I can get this book read in a week. I am just so excited to be back with all of these characters. I'm not gonna lie, I especially I'm so excited to be back with the Akatar gang. Let's start with like the ending of Crescent City 2. It leaves off on such a cliffhanger. I'm so happy that this book picked up right where it left off because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to breathe. How do I keep this like as vague as possible? <laughs> That's what I'm struggling with. First impressions, I love that Bryce and Nesta are just thrown together right in the beginning. Those are the two characters that I think all of us wanted to see like bond and interact and hopefully become besties. I would actually die. But also just seeing like Azriel and seeing Reese and just, oh my gosh, all of them. It just makes my heart so, so happy. I wanted it to be a little bit more focused on the Bryce side of things. Within each chapter, we're switching to multiple POVs. Like it's not okay, this chapter is a Bryce chapter, this chapter is a Therian chapter, this chapter is a Hunt chapter. There's some chapters where you switch between like all three of them and so that was crazy. Right now, I feel like I'm pretty happy with jumping between all of the different perspectives because we have so many characters that are in so many different places experiencing so many different things, but it's all very high stakes that it pulled me right in from the very beginning. I'm not complaining, super happy about it. I feel like I'm trying to still get my bearings. I don't have a lot of feelings besides, oh my gosh, like we're back with these characters and oh my gosh, so many things are happening. So that is the non-spoiler update for now. I'm planning on reading another, like I said, 130 pages today. I'm having a really awful day. I decided after going book shopping earlier today for the rest of the afternoon I'm going to be sitting on the couch and reading House of Flame and Shadow. So that's what I've been doing. I've only read a couple more pages I think since my last um, update but I do hope to get a good chunk read. So I'm now on chapter 17. I think my last check-in was on chapter 12. I'm surprised at how slowly the story is moving forward for how like long this book is. I thought that there was going to be action happening almost every step of the way. And I feel like for my last check-in I mentioned, we're following all of our different characters who are in very, very different places with lots of different things going on. But almost 200 pages in, I'm on page 176. I would have expected like, something more to happen at this point. Although in my spoiler update that I'll give um, at the end, I think we're at the cusp of things like starting to happen. I'm gonna do a spoiler update right now, but I just figured I would give that quick update of like the plan for today. I didn't read anything yesterday. I was supposed to read my 130 pages and I didn't. So I'm still trying to get up to part two, which is page 268. And then depending on how I'm feeling, which, I just want to disappear into a fantasy world right now and not have to think about real life. This is just all I want to do and all I want to focus on. Hello besties, I owe y'all an update because I have read quite a bit more of <laughs> this book since my last check-in. So I'm currently on page 
346. I read quite a bit over the last two days and I'm trying to think of like general thoughts and updates that I want to give. I'm not gonna lie, with this book, I feel like I'm almost no thoughts head empty. I have had emotional moments reading this book where it's been like so suspenseful and I'm like, oh my gosh, wait, what just happened? Like what? I have had those moments, but I feel like the first time that I read House of Sky and Breath, I was way too over analytical. I was getting way too in my head about certain things. And so with Flame and Shadow, I really wanted to make sure like, just read the book for what it is, take it for what it is, take it at face value. And then if you want to reread, which I'm sure that I will because I've reread all of these books, that's when you can go a little bit deeper. And I've made a point to really avoid anyone's opinions. I've even been trying to avoid like star ratings for the most part. Any thoughts, like obviously avoiding spoilers as well. I've been avoiding stuff like that for this book because I wanted a completely blank slate to be able to form my own opinions. It's not what I was expecting. We've kind of hit, I'm 42% of the way into the book at this point. And I thought that different things would be happening <laughs> than what is currently happening. Mainly, I thought that this crossover part of the book would have been more so far. I'm trying to be as general as possible. Maybe those other characters will come back and things are gonna get even more twisty turny. I am, would imagine that this book leaves off on a massive cliffhanger because what I have seen from people is saying, I can't wait for the next Akatar book to come out. And so that's like the only thing that I've seen, which is very curious. So like, I know something's gonna happen with those characters to like bring them back in the loop here. I wish that Ethan wasn't as much of like a part in this book as he is. I'm so bored with him. I think that the direction that Therian's story is going in has been fun and interesting and very unexpected. The point that I got to, we just started to see Jessiba a little bit more, which is so exciting. And we got to learn like more of her backstory, which I was so stinking excited for. Jessiba is like one of my favorite characters and she's just been so mysterious. I love her. The other character that I really wish we would get a lot more about to learn like why she is the way that she is, is the Viper Queen. And so like we had some scenes with her, but I don't know if anyone's gonna crack that shell because she is just crazy. I'm gonna stop holding this book because it's literally an arm workout. I also decided against annotating for this read because I feel like annotating, it's obviously like a much more analytical experience and I just wanted to enjoy my read and not have to worry about like my highlighters and my colored pens and my tabs and like what I was gonna tab and all of that stuff. I, I will definitely annotate this at some point. Today is just not that day. So yesterday I read my 150 pages. Today the goal is to read slightly more because I was under the impression that this book is exactly 800 pages like the other two have been. They've been like 801. This is 832 or something like that. So I'm reading an extra 15 pages today and tomorrow <laughs> to finish this on time. But now I am officially 61% of the way through and I figured I would just give some like general thoughts and feelings for the non-spoiler section. Overall, I have really been enjoying my time. Like this book, we're going so many places and we're seeing so many characters 
getting finally the juicy details about the things we've been wondering since book one and I am really appreciating that I think it's quite fun but not a lot has a lot has happened but also like not a lot has happened we've gone many different places in the pursuit of knowledge I love adventure books so I've really been enjoying my time with this but when you scale back out of these pages and think of it as like the big picture we've had intense moments we've definitely had suspenseful moments we've had plot twists of character backstory but we haven't had like big eventful super big like plot moments that are driving the plot forward which is a little uh, it's just interesting right like the the most recent like other series that i've read from sarah j mass for example was throne of glass where in almost every single book there are massive events that drive the plot forward that bring it to a completely different place and it's just like a wild and crazy ride this book in the series i think in general is much more you have to enjoy these characters and just be along for the ride of wherever they're gonna take you i'm definitely enjoying one group of characters far more than i'm enjoying the other group of characters <laughs> lydia has become one of my new favorite characters i love her so much i'm so intrigued i want to know more of her backstory I'm obsessed with her and I love that her and Bryce are kind of having moments like just I love it so much and I love Rune and his like romance in this it's just absolute perfection it is angsty it is emotional like when they get like angry at each other and they're like actually super angry and pissed off at each other love it I absolutely love to see it I think that the conflict not like super serious at this point but like there is kind of a conflict and tension and not in like the sexual fun way between Bryce and Hunt and I'm very curious as to where that's going but the characters that I could take them or leave them Ethan and his whole crew at this point like the characters that are surrounding Ethan I still don't get it like I'm not super bought into it I do love Jessica and I love everything that we've learned about her she's my other like I'm so happy. I think in my vlog where I was doing Crescent City 1 and 2 and we were talking about Jessica, I was like, I'm so excited for House of Flame and Shadow because I can't wait to find out more about Jessica. So I'm glad that she's kind of mixed in with the Ethan crew because in CC2, when Ethan was just off on his side quests, it was not it for me. So that's what I'm feeling so far. I, I'm going to read another, like I said, big chunk today. So I will do another check-in afterwards. I'm nervous for this ending because so many people have been like, oh my gosh, like how is Hope Fast going? You have to let me know your reactions to the end. It just makes me nervous. only about 160 pages left of this massive chunky book. I'm excited to be done with it and I don't mean for that to sound negative but I'm excited for I'm excited to know what happens. I feel like we've kind of been we've been gradually building momentum throughout this entire book and I'm really hoping that the ending is as impactful as I'm hoping it to be i think that it will be because some crazy things just happened in the last section that i read i continuously have this battle that i've mentioned multiple times where i am just so tired of reading about ethan in the last section that i read something did happen where people kind of steered him straight and i was like praise the almighty lord sarah j mass because like we needed something to push him in the right direction i was so tired of him just meandering all around. I will stop my ranting about idiot Ethan over here. Absolutely love what's happening with Bryce. I love that everyone is just like rallying around her. She's officially had this, we'll call it like a character transition, very similar to Aelin. I find that the phrasing is super, super similar and it's just nostalgic almost. It's so cool to see it happen with Bryce. I did also order a new Crescent City shirt. It will be coming in, I think, this weekend, either Saturday or Sunday. So I will show it to y'all. It's from this really cute bookish shop called Caffeine and Curses, I believe. <sighs> I'm 
this line literally just gave me goosebumps. Like I am so terrified and scared. The last time I took a stand like this with the fallen, it cost me everything. He swallowed hard, but kept his gaze on her. She could have sworn lightning sparked along his wings. But this time I have Bryce Adelaide Quinlan at my side. Oh my gosh, I just finished this. <sighs> and it's very fitting that pretty much just as I finished this, I got a text that I had a package that is related. How freaking stunning. Okay, so I don't think I can collect my thoughts to give you any coherent sentences at this point in time, but absolutely five stars. I freaking loved the ending of this so much. I think, no spoilers, but I think like, it wrapped up very cleanly. It wrapped up perfectly. I'm so happy with like literally everything and everyone. I'm obsessed. Also, the additional chapter in my version was for Azrael, Nesta, and Bryce. I loved it so much. I guess the only thing I'm confused about is like how the series is going to continue because it seems like all of the conflict wrapped up so perfectly and so nicely. So that kind of scares me. Let's open this. So I mentioned I ordered something from the store, Caffeine and Curses. They have the cutest bookish merch. Just wait, just wait. I am so in awe, shock and awe. This is so beautiful. It literally says, Jelly Jubilee presents Bryce through love all is possible. Light it up. Starborn Tour, special guests, Lahaba, Pack of Devils, Frat Pack, Umber Mortis, Rune Dannon, and Cyrix. Oh my gosh, I love it! I'm going to literally put it on my body right now. This is my new comfort piece of clothing. I will be wearing it for the foreseeable future. It's the next day. I've had some time to sit with my feelings. I've also started to scour the internet for HoFAS reading vlogs, and I'm starting to like want to seek out other people's opinions on certain things because I I did enjoy my time reading this book. Did it live up to the first book's level of emotions, characters, plot, like everything for me? No. I feel like the first book in this series for me is still Sarah J Mass's magnum opus. Like that was just so good and so much happens in this book. We get a lot of conclusions, which I thought was fun to experience, but I think my overall really general thoughts on the three Crescent City books that we have so far, compared to the Akatar series, the Akatar series was truly romanticy. Like the romances were front and center, so it had really strong romances between characters that we just loved so much. And it also had really strong plot that was connected to the relationships. I feel like Bryce and Hunt's relationship throughout Crescent City really doesn't match up or like even compare to Feyre and Reese or Nesta and Cassian. It's overall like, again, I had fun reading it, but it's not my favorite thing in the, in the entire world how sci-fi the Crescent City books ended up becoming. So those are like my general thoughts. Because of the enjoyment level of just being with all of the characters and like the little crossover that we did get, I'm going to give this four stars. My initial, like right after I finished it, I was like, oh my gosh, five stars. That ending was so epic. I love how everything concluded and wrapped up so nicely. I think I mentioned this, but I am really curious about how things are going to continue with the series because there's not a lot of conflict left at this point. I think I've heard that there's going to be one more Crescent City book, more Akatar books, and then potentially like another series coming out from Sarah J Mass. Those are my overall like general feelings. I am going to do my like spoiler filled thoughts and feelings in the spoiler section, but if you watched this far, first of all, thank you so much. Second of all, leave a Crescent Moon for the Crescent City series. Stay tuned because the entire spoiler section is coming after this. 
Hello besties. First spoiler filled update for House of Flame and Shadow. I am on chapter 17, I'm on page 176, and I just wanted to give like a couple quick updated thoughts because I feel like we're right at the cusp of where we're going to learn more important information and like things are going to start happening a little bit more. So like I said in the non-spoiler updates, I've kind of just been vibing with it up to this point. I really enjoyed seeing how Reese and Azriel and Nesta have been interacting with Bryce. I think that's so fun. We're starting to get to some points where, you know, they've been like walking through this cave. They battled the Min midden guard worm. And now Nesta is asking all these questions about how Bryce's like tech works and how her phone works and stuff like that, which is just so charming and funny. I think that this cave setup is very interesting. It's very clearly a tactic to be like, how can I get the characters that everyone wanted to interact? How can I just get them together and separate everyone else out? Oh, let me throw them in a cave together, completely stranded away from everything else and have them talk, walk, get to know each other, battle things together. That's what it's giving. I'm not mad at it, but almost 200 pages in i do feel like let's have something happen like nothing has happened quite yet which is odd because all of our characters as scattered as they are they're all in very high stakes situations and so it's just been a little bit weird that like more action hasn't happened right away that's what i was expecting to happen but like i said i'm vibing i'm not like mad at it i'm still just going with the flow getting my bearings the scenes that we have of Bakshin, Hunt, and Rune getting tortured are absolutely devastating me. But when they all started like hysterically laughing together, like they're just laughing through the pain together and Hunt had that moment of realization where he's like, at least I'm not here alone. At least I'm in this together. At least I have like my friends here. And he had that realization too that Bakshin, you know, he's Danica's mate or was Danica's mate and he's, he's a ride or die at this point with the crew. I really enjoy that, even though I'm devastated for them. Other than that, y'all know, if you watched my other vlog about reading the first two Crescent City books, not a massive fan of Ethan, and I think the fact that he is the leader of like our third group of characters, he's with Therian, Flynn, Deck, Mark, all of them, I don't like him. So I don't understand why he is the leader. I think Therian is way more interesting. I don't understand why Ethan is like the leader of that group and he's just, it seems like he's making really dumb decisions. I have a feeling it's going to, towards the end of the book, come out as like, oh, he's really smart and like he cares about his friends and he's like a good leader. That's where I'm at. Um, I just got to, like I said, the end of chapter 16 was when they got to this big massive metal wall and Bryce put her hand on it to open it. And Nessa was like, you thought that that was gonna move the wall? And then a door opens for them. That's where I'm saying I hope that something is coming because right now not too, too much has been happening. I owe you a spoiler filled update because so much has happened in the plot since my last check-in, which is quite funny because last check-in I had said I'm surprised that like nothing has happened yet and I'm almost like 200 pages in well I am now on page 346 and so much has just happened so this is going to be not that analytical but it's just going to be like my reactions to things that have happened in the plot what's even happened like I don't remember Bryce and Az and Nesta learned all of the history of Thea and her daughters, which was horrifying. I'm surprised that SJM made them as like evil and uncaring and like conqueror-esque as she did. That was quite surprising because usually, I don't know, I guess I just wasn't expecting them to play that much of a villain in like the history of this world and these worlds, I guess. I thought it was very interesting that as when, I think her name is Celine, yeah. When Celine popped up in her like hologram, he was like, she looks so much like Reese's sister. That was very intriguing. And the fact that we didn't get any answer to that at all, I was like, mm, rude. We need to know this connection of starborn power. We need to know this connection between Bryce, Rune, and Reese. Like, I need to know that. From then, like that whole, I forget if it was one chapter, if it was multiple chapters, but that entire like history lesson that we got 
was so info dumpy and that it gave us all of the connections and the history that we wanted to know from Sky and Breath. However, I'm surprised that it was like literally just a history lesson of Celine being like, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. And we were just like getting the reactions of Bryce and Nesta as, as Celine was speaking. I'm not coming to conclusions. I'm not like thinking too hard about it. I was just surprised at that format that was chosen. Also like the hologram that just popped up was a bit weird. When Bryce sucks her power up through the floor and she just like fully becomes Starborn Princess, I was applauding. Standing ovation, I thought that was incredible. And then when they fall through the floor and there's just an Asteri in this crystal coffin and they like have a whole conversation with her and then Nesta slices the crap out of her, I was like, so Nesta can kill the Asteri. What I'm very confused about and I'm sure that we're gonna get answers because I'm only 42% of the way into this book. What I'm very confused about and I'm really surprised about was that after all of that happened, Bryce just up and says, I'm Audi 5000, and she immediately goes back to Midgard. And they made it seem like it was going to be such a big, difficult thing for her to figure out how to get back there. But she just fully uses her Starborn Princess powers. She hits the crystal coffin. She creates the portal and she jumps right back. And now she's with the Autumn King. I really thought that the crossover was going to last for a lot longer. Like, I'm kind of sad. I'm sure. I have a feeling that they're going to come back around. Like, something's going to happen where they're going to, like, reconnect later in the story. I have to assume that. The only other thoughts and feelings I have, actually, I have a lot, because with our whole other cast of characters, they escaped the Asteri Palace, the Hind finally, like, showed up for them, got them out. So suspenseful. I loved the way that it was written. I was really annoyed that we were switching back to Ethan during all of those scenes. Like, what the actual F? I don't care about Ethan. I want to know what's going on with Bryce and Bastion and Rune and the hint. And when she gets to like the cliff edge and then she jumps off and she gets shot in the heart, I was... Y'all, I was so angry with myself. I was reading all of that portion last night and I kept doing the one more chapter to myself and so I was like looking to see how many pages were left in the current chapter that I was reading and I literally saw when I was checking the next chapter and then the hind died or whatever the last line was and I was like did I just freaking spoil that for myself they're all on the squid ship they're all just in absolute emotional tatters like they're just so broken the fact that Bryce now needs to find a way to get on this squid ship when the squid ship is undetectable, I'm scared for her. I just want her and Hunt to reunite and I want her to give Rune a big hug. It makes me so sad. So emotionally and physically, that's where I'm at in the book. Little spoiler update because I'm, I can't even, I can't even process what just happened in this freaking book. I don't know what I was expecting actually, but like this wouldn't have come in my wildest dreams. Bryce reveals to the Autumn King that she went there intentionally because he's the one who has been researching the star sword and the truth teller and he would know all that stuff. So she basically like played him like an absolute fiddle and then put the Gorgian cuffs on him and locked him in a closet. And then she just teleports away to go hang out with Hunt and the rest of her crew. I am in love with her. I would bow down to her, kiss her feet. I love her so stinking much. She is just incredible. Now, please let's jump to Lydia because she is quickly becoming one of my favorite characters in this book. She is so mysterious and badass and misunderstood. I'm obsessed with her. When she, first of all, I already reacted, I think, to when she like died and I was like, there's no way. Her and Rune's love story is not over yet and thankfully it is not. When she opened her eyes and ran to the classroom to go see her twin sons, I'm like, it is not, Pollux is not the father to these children. Who is the father? Who is her baby daddy? 
Hopefully you can tell how freaking unwell I am by how much I'm screaming. I literally just want to be screaming at the top of my lungs. Then we find out that she is employed by the Ocean Queen in some type of way that's still a mystery to us. I am so shooky to my freaking core. Lydia and Bryce are like the main characters of the story. You can't convince me otherwise. Then she goes, she's headed back to her room, runs into Rune, and Rune's like, okay, so what's the sob story? And they're both like pissed off at each other, which... To be honest, I'm kind of annoyed that they weren't just like immediately, oh my gosh, I love you. Oh my gosh, I love you too. But it makes so much sense that they're not and I'm really, really enjoying that they weren't just like right away. And she's like, you don't deserve to hear my sob story. I'm obsessed with her. Now, let's jump to the first like two sentences of chapter 44. I'm currently on page 390. I'm trying to read to page 500 today because in order to finish this before Realm of Fun starts on Friday, and today is Tuesday, I need to be reading 150 pages of this a day. I really slacked off and I haven't read this for the past like couple days. I'm just gonna read this to you because I literally had to stop and put the book down and just stare off into space and think like, I, I can't even put myself in Sarah J Mass's shoes when she was like, this is, the perfect start to Ethan's chapter. Ethan was carefully setting down a figurine of Kathana giving birth on all fours, the planet Midgard crowning between her legs when Jessica's phone rang. What in the actual is going on? The shrill sound shattered the silence, but Ethan's sunball reflexes kept him from dropping the fragile marble. I'm so tired of Ethan and his sunball reflexes. Sarah J Mass is like a whole different breed. Okay friends, spoiler filled update from yesterday. So I'm on chapter 55, I'm on page 500. I did read my 150 pages. I am someone who fully supports an adventure story. I know that not everyone loves books where our characters are like traveling to different places, either to like do specific things or find out knowledge. In this case, it is we are on a journey slash adventure of knowledge and we have two separate groups of characters that are like pursuing i don't know like different things i guess i'm here for it i really like it i love that this story is just filling in all of the holes that were created in books one and two what i am surprised about though at this point there hasn't been any conflict with the asteri even though they are back in midgard like they are just running around doing their own thing i'm surprised that the asteri like the asteri know that the escaped prisoners went into the squid submarine because the heinz crew was like chasing her to the edge i'm surprised that there haven't been more like big plot moments that is one thing that i'm really surprised about i'm also really surprised that our Akatar gang hasn't like come back into the picture. I'm kind of upset about it. And if they don't come back by the end of the book, I'm definitely going to be sad about it. The most interesting thing that's happening with like Bryce and her magic at this point is that she, her lightness has a darkness to it. And when I was reading the chapters regarding Morven and when they like first got to Avalyn and sh Bryce was in the snarkiest, most attitude-y way possible, like pleading her case about why they need to be on the island and why they need access to the Cave of Princes and to the archives. A thought that popped into my head was that Azriel got tortured by his family and by his dad. And I think that he also had siblings that were really good at that like mind to mind connection. I know that Azriel's family, like they all had shadows and it talks about how dark and wild and like empty Morven and the two murder twins like how their magic feels to others and it's really making me think of Azriel and his magic and his backstory because all we really know about him or at least <laughs> what I can remember which might not be everything it probably isn't but he was like tortured by his family and by his father and that's why he has scars all over his hands and his body that's what it made me think of so i'm ready to like get somewhere with this pursuit of knowledge the one thing that's really annoying me about this story is that ethan just thinks that the solution to all of his problems is to resurrect people from the dead none of it has gone the way that he wants to he tried to do it with his brother in the second book he tried to do it with sigrid is that her name 
that went absolutely horrible. She became a freaking reaper. Like, why did he think that was going to be a good idea? And now, like, their next person that they want to resurrect is Sophie. Like, Sophie has been dead for so long. How is that the answer to anything at all? The wolves just seem like such a lost cause at this point that it's annoying to me that we're still returning back to them and ethan is on this like journey to save the wolves it's like bestie you were kind of being hinted at as an alpha and yet like you're being such a beta and you just want to give all this power to sigrid even though she's dead and you beheaded her i wish that sigrid had killed ethan and then she battled Sabine for the for the wolves and she won. Like I wish that that was the plot line of the wolves so that I could just be done with all of this sunball idiot Ethan <laughs> nonsense. So those are my honest feelings. Anyways, besties, I only have like 160 pages left of this book. We are finishing her today. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to find out like how this ends and what happens. So I am currently on chapter 79, page 666 that's kind of awkward bryce found thea's power on avalyn she's now officially recognized as a queen when rune slays his father and chops his head off like chops it off and then spears it so that it's on the sword i'm so unwell like i'm still unwell to this moment just talking about it it was so incredible i loved it <laughs> Rune and Lydia went on the quest to recruit Isaiah and Naomi when they're in like the sewer tunnels on their way there and he refers to her as his girlfriend and she he's like is that okay if I called you my girlfriend she's like yeah Rune that's okay I was like I am so in love with him I love that they just want to jump each other's bones like throughout this whole book they just have been so perfect oh my gosh i love them so much they're absolutely one of my favorite elements of this whole entire story so that's where i'm at i feel like a lot of battles are about to happen when bryce opens the portal and she opens it to nesta just chilling and nesta is like what in the world do you want like leave me alone not bargains but she leaves her parents as collateral in prithian y'all the amount of unwell and she trades for the mask and then she puts on the mask that was a moment that brought me back to reading a court of silver flames and when nesta puts on the mask for the first time and she's coming out of the lake and it was just she was the queen of death in that moment my brain like stops functioning when i think about it i'm glad that ethan did get finally redirected to just his place as alpha and stop trying to force other people into the role like i get that he's playing this like reluctant leader card he doesn't want to have that responsibility he doesn't want to lead and bryce kind of went through something similar where she was like i don't want to be queen of the fae i don't like the fae i don't have faith in the fae and then she kind of had that change of heart and she did step into her role as queen of the Valbaran and Avalyn Fey. Oh my freaking god. It gives me chills. Ethan, now that he's like the super wolf and they found the cure to the parasite, at least temporarily, and he's like, can conjure snow now. He's the ice wolf. Um, hopefully he stops talking about Sunball. That is my hope and my prayers for Ethan Holstrom. I'm so ready to jump back into this. I'm gonna start reading this right now. All right, friends, it is time for the deep dive of my conclusion. So if you watched the non-spoiler section, you know, like I gave this a four star. When I first finished it, I was like, oh my gosh, five star. I was riding a high, but I knew I had to sit with my feelings. And I did also want to start hearing thoughts and opinions from other people because I know a lot of people were like disappointed with this book and I see where they're coming from. For me, I could tell from House of Sky and Breath that the Crescent City series wasn't turning into something that I knew I was going to be super obsessed with. For me, the Akatar series is still the top series. I also don't know if I'm going to continue with the series because I've heard that the next Crescent City book, Therian, is going to be like the center focal point. Bryson Hunt's story definitely came to a conclusion with this book and i think the only character that there were more open-ended questions and things happening with was therian he's just not like a strong enough character for me to care to really continue with him i don't usually swear in my videos so swear a warning coming but like he is just such a fuck boy like the way that he led on the river queen's daughter because he basically just wanted to have sex with her and then he had to promise to marry her strung her along for 10 years and then just started trying to like escape the messes that he caused himself because he was thinking with his dick <laughs> 
<laughs> gross. When Cynthia just decides to like dip and leave him and she like left him a note and was like, sorry, but like I gotta go find my ex because I don't like that he's now enthralled by the Viper Queen. I was like, honestly, <laughs> she is giving Therian his energy right back to him. And I kind of love that. And I love her for doing that. The things that I didn't love about this book were number one, the crossover i was expecting a lot more from it i was expecting the akatar team to like rally behind bryce and hunt that's what i would have loved to see i do understand why that didn't happen i did like the crossover of like what happened between them sharing these weapons that their world's histories are combined and intertwined behind the scenes i didn't love how we just got basically a history lesson from thea's hologram and it was very info dumpy. And this book needed to be info dumpy with all of those answers to all of the questions that were set up in House of Sky and Breath because Sky and Breath was just like a ton of nothingness, if I'm honest, besides the ending of the book. That was the only good part of that book. I gave House of Sky and Breath three stars. If you didn't watch that vlog, I'll link it down below. I think that there could have been a lot more answers to things and a lot more action in House of Sky and Breath compared to this book. I'm surprised that the battle with the Asteri was literally in the last like 100 to 75 pages. I was expecting it to be like a multi-level battle about certain things. It was basically just like our boys escaped the dungeons, Bryce came back, and then they spent the whole middle of the book preparing for what was going to happen. And then this massive battle that should have been like way more difficult than what it was, was just shoved into the last like 75 pages and probably even less than that because the last couple chapters were the aftermath of the battle. I think that the complaints that everything is very convenient, I do completely agree. It didn't ruin the book for me, but that is Sarah J Mass. Like there's just never stakes with her, even if it's a crazy crazy battle against like really difficult big bad villains i mean if you think about the akatar series i don't know why you'd be watching this vlog if you haven't read akatar but <laughs> akatar was the same way like they were going up against the king of highburn and there was never any stakes like characters died and then they just came back to life. You knew that they were never going to die. Everything is extremely convenient. The characters find exactly what they need to find, exactly when they need it. Like, that is just Sarah J. Mass's writing. She will always write a happily ever after. And all of her main characters are always going to be extremely OP. And none of them are going to die. If you want a series where characters get tortured and things are way more difficult than they need to be, please read Saba Tahir and Ember in the Ashes series and you will know what I'm talking about. So that's what I was expecting from this. I wasn't expecting a struggle. You knew it was going to be convenient because like that is just her as an author. I'm not mad at it, but I did have to take the approach to this book going into this book being like, I'm not going to think too hard about anything. I'm just going to vibe and see where the book takes me. And that's why I enjoyed this book so much more than I enjoyed Sky and Breath. So that is it my friends i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please be sure to give it a big thumbs up subscribe to my channel and if you've made it this far leave a snake because the viper queen and there's snakes on the cover here so leave a little snaky poo so i know that you're a real one and you watch the spoiler section Bye.